right guys, so welcome to our first episode of uh, After Hours here at Battlefield Vegas. Uh, thank you guys for coming here today. I really appreciate you guys being here. Right now. Talk about what we got to talk about here. Um, on today we're going to talk about mostly uh, who we are, what Battlefield consists of, as far as as far as the personnel that works here, and uh, and also some of the changes that we've seen recently. But uh, but first off, let's uh, let's kind of introduce ourselves a little bit. Uh, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, brother? Uh, John Whitney did uh, nine years in the army. Uh, did a trip to Iraq, trip to Afghanistan as an MP, and I got my combat action badge in uh, 2006 in Iraq. Awesome, awesome. Mike? Uh, I did nine and some change in the Marine Corps. Did uh, tour to Iraq in 2006, uh, tour to uh, Jordan in 2008, and then the Philippines in 2011. Uh, combat tour in 2006. Having a good time. Yeah, good time. Getting dirty. Uh, James O'Connor, I'm uh, going on 11 years. Um, I have uh, four and a half years active duty. I was with the 101st Airborne Division, I was in the infantry. Um, at Pathfinder Company there. Did uh, Iraq in 506. I got my CIB. I'm um, actually Good Friday, 2006. Um, and uh, Afghanistan, end of 09, 2010. Now I'm currently uh, uh, Section Sergeant Bradley Commander at uh, 1221 Cap and I'm Nevada National Guard. Awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, Tony, tell us about yourself. Uh, I've been in currently six years. I'm getting ready for a deployment right now myself. I'm serving right now in National Guard. And um, I still got another three years left on my contract. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. We're all the way, man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> all the way. Uh, That's yet. a nice little retirement, man. Yeah. We'll see. Back it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, I've been in a lot of videos. My name is Levio Waves. I, uh, I did 10 years in the infantry. Uh, been a lot of different places, a lot of different jobs. Uh, been to Iraq, spent some time over there. Uh, had a. Uh, some time in upstate New York, North Carolina, California, and uh, got out about three years ago. But, uh, so, <clears throat> most of us here at Battlefield Vegas, we're all, uh, I, I think the majority, I think 90% of us are, are prior service. Uh, out of 50 employees, 90% of us are, are prior service. Uh, a higher, the high number of that are combat vets, uh, grunts, MPs, uh, Air Force guys, Navy guys, we got uh, Marines, Army, everybody's covered here. And uh, one of the things that, uh, like I was talking about some of the changes that, that we made here at Battlefield Vegas, uh, one of them has to be has to do with the uniforms. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of stuff online when we post pictures or when people post pictures of us. We've been, uh, we've, we've been hearing a lot about uh, you know, how our uniforms are, are not to standard, we're playing the part. Uh, I think a lot of people might be under the impression that we're just a bunch of jokers trying to trying to be something, trying to act like we're something that we're not. Uh, I got a couple of, I got a couple, on, a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. Some of the comments online, but uh, we'll, we'll go over some of that and then we'll, we'll listen to you guys a little bit and, and, and how you guys feel about it. Um, right now, let's let's take a quick little break, and uh, when we come back, we'll we'll address these directly. All right, cool. All right. Sounds good to me. Casinos, the rides, the games, the shows. Suit up, strap in, and get ready for action. Battlefield Vegas is now open to civilians. So walk, drive, or cab it to Battlefield Vegas and experience one of the hottest new attractions in town. It'll be a blast. Literally. All right, guys. All right, so welcome back. Uh, again, thanks for, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, like I said before, one of the things we're going to talk about is uh, some of the stuff we see online. We get a lot of positive feedback. Uh, Online has, you know, the internet's kind of made us pretty popular, man. Especially overseas, you know, and the people from the UK and, and Australia and Canada they come over here and they they tell us that we're pretty much famous. I mean, it's funny here in Vegas, most, most people don't know who we are, but around we're like known around the world. And um, what comes with that is uh, is you know, haven't really put ourselves out there for people to understand who we are. And so there's a uh, there's a lot of confusion. Some of the stuff that uh, that we'll go over, um, you know, this is what we were wearing before. We were all wearing our perspective uniforms that we wore in the service. 
and uh, that's that's what a lot of people were, you know, you guys you guys spoke up, we listen, I mean we take it seriously, so um, we dropped ten thousand dollars on these on these tropical uh, tropical multicam uniforms to uh, to kind of make sure that we're not representing any branch of any service. Uh, we're representing Battlefield Vegas as we always have been, but but now we're we're making that that clean break. So. Uh, so it's it's less confusing for people. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple examples, and uh, we want to hear what you guys think about it. Um, one of the about, one of the uni one of the comments that we got was about uh, one of the uniforms that one of us was wearing in a video that we posted a while back. And uh, guy says, uh, "Why is this guy in a uniform, looking like complete shit? If you guys are gonna pretend, at least do it well." Um, Basically, what he's going off of is is uh, wearing ball caps. I'm pretty sure ball caps, rolled up sleeves. I mean, we're not going off of uh, AR670-1 for the Army. Um, so when somebody sees ACUs, they're they're assuming that we're we're trying to play the part. Like like I said before, man, I think people might assume that we're just some jokers trying to act like we're something that we're not. But uh, I mean, to me, without asking questions, just making comments is kind of kind of kind of the issue that we have here. I want to put that. I want to put this out here who we really are, but I mean, what, what do you guys think about? Well, it, it's, I, I understand it and I, and, I, and I get the point, okay? But like, we're not wearing, you know, Marine Corps tapes or U.S. Army tapes and whatnot, okay? Um, and what, you know, this, this whole thing with the internet and the onset of this, this stolen valor hysteria, right. it's kind of irritating sometimes because when, when you were in, you know, if something was happening in your stressful situation, before just jumping right into it, you took a step back and you assessed the situation. Right. Okay, it's as simple as PM in Battlefield, private message in Battlefield on Facebook. Hey, what's going on with these guys in uniform? Oh yeah, you know we're all veterans. Our owner, the owner Doc, Doc Cheney's a vet. Uh, you know, this is a very veteran-friendly place for for guys like us. You know that are you know still in you know part time or fresh out of the military to come in and kind of find a place to transition to right. when they're coming back in the civilian side, and that's a good environment. People. You know, don't really understand it. You know, I mean, when you get hired on here, you turn in your 214. Right. Like, make sure you're checked out and legit. So, like, if you know somebody's wearing a CIB at work, that guy earned that CIB, that combat infantryman badge. Right. Or that guy has those parachutist wings. You know, we're, there's nothing fake or, or phony or stolen valor. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. You're getting upset over sideburns. Uh, maybe you should, you know, worry about something else in the course of your day. Right. You know. Yeah, some, some things are more important. You know, I think the most important part of what you're getting at is, is what a lot of people don't understand is when you see and do the craziest shit that is, is known to mankind, when you live a lifestyle long enough and you get out, I don't care what normal job you try to get, you're, you're a weirdo, man. Yeah. Like you, you can't, you can't <laughs> you make, you don't fit in. Like you try to make your, you have to be careful what jokes you make, man. Like. Uh, I'll tell you, for example, man, any, any job I had trying, as I got out of the military, you know, uh, people don't understand, like, when you get a little worked up, uh, when I'm like, well, what the fuck? People, like, back up or they, or they come at you like, hey, man, hey, calm down. Here, I do the same thing and everybody's like, what's up, man, talk to me. You, you know, come in here, you make whatever joke you want. Everybody's on the same level. So all this time we've all been around, feeling like we're flapping out in the wind by ourselves, man. We, I mean... One of the reasons that, one of the big things that keeps us bringing us back here to Battlefield Vegas is that this is, uh, we, we all have been brought together to where we're not alone anymore, man. Like, like we have a place that we all fit in and, uh, and, it, and it's important to me and I'm pretty sure it's important to you guys. Yeah. This, is, this is something that we have all, I mean, that, that the owners here have, have given us and I think it's, it was almost accidental. This is, you know, the, the, one of the biggest things that affects us and, and who we are and what makes this place so great for us. Um, but I mean... Uh, the biggest thing even for me was, I, mean, I just got out in November and then going into school, like I felt like I was in on Mars. Right. You know, and you get in, you go, you're just trying to go through the motions, but you still have that little mentality of uh, your military background. Once you get in there and you're trying to just jump right into the civilian world, you feel lost. Like, you, you feel like nothing around you is making sense anymore. Right. Come here in, at Battlefield, we're able to kind of slowly transition back into the civilian side of life where 
we're kind of slowly clicking those switches off yeah. of able to, all right, I'm back home. Um, I'm safe, everything's great. Now we're able to kind of it's just get like back in the a world. good support cast where something that's familiar, but at the same time, it's something that's going to help you transition to the next stage where obviously you don't have to be how you were every day when you were active duty or wherever you served, but being around those kind of people that coming off of a situation similar to yours and going back into the world just like you are, it's good to have people like that around you to help you transition back to that normal life. You know? And I'll let, and I'll let John, you know, John can say this too, you know, uh, what's good about ownership here, and you can't find this in a lot of, jo a lot of jobs here in town, you know, and I've, I was, I've been a loan officer and a couple other gigs before this. Um, like you and I both use our post 9-11 GI Bill and our schedule is catered to school because mm -hmm. ownership eventually wants us to move on to to uh, to to you know achieve our goals and career paths. Mm -hmm. Like I know you and I, once it comes to finals week, it's like, hey, I got I got a test to study for. All right, cool. We'll see. We'll see you in a couple days, right? right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. You know, if I need to split early or something like that, they're more than happy to let me go. Um, I'm actually doing a lot of shit with the VA right now, fighting with them. Got a lot of things going on, and uh, too easy. Just walk in the office. Hey, man, I got a couple doctor's appointments. I got this, that, and the other thing going on. Hey, no problem. Go take care of your business. We'll see you on Monday, right. and they're more than happy to assist. And you know, when you when you are away from here for a little bit, like for whatever reason, uh, and you do feel lost, it's it's kind of cool that the the one thing that you have is if if you start feeling lost and feeling like you're flapping on the when you go to work, that's yeah, kinda, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Like, right. and it just brings you it centers you, man. You do some work, you go to work, and you're getting you're getting fucking paid to to get back to center again. Yeah, I spend more time with you guys than I do with anybody else. So. Right. Thanks, right. <laughs> yeah. man. And you know, the cool thing about it is, is we all have different experiences and we're all from, we're all different positions from our separation from, right. from military to civilian life. So some people are further in that transition, some people are a little bit earlier in that transition. Mm -hmm. So if you're having that hard time, you can go to somebody, hey man, how do I use my GI Bill? Hey man, how do I do this? How do, how do I, I get do my that? disability? How yeah. do I, yeah. And it's we've all walked the walk, and we've all been there, and we've dealt with the lines and the wait periods, and we know how to work the system. And we can give each other tips and tricks on how to make it happen. Like, yeah. We're not we're not working with customers, and we're just you know whether we're loading mags or working on guns, you know, uh, what helps is like you're absolutely right. You know who? Hey, I'm trying to use my GI Bill for the first time. How do I use it? Oh, okay, yeah, this is the steps you got to do. Hey, um, you know, let's go take a look at UNLV or CSN, or you know, and, and it's yeah. good. Or in your case, like, you know, trying to use your guard waiver because I'm in the guard, you know. Oh, yeah, this is the process. This is you need to talk to, you, blah, 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 you know. Right. And yeah. that, and that, that's a good help instead of just, like, sitting at home by yourself. And you're like, oh, shit, I'm out. What do I do, you know? You know, and, and like I said, I think it's, you know, when, when Doc put this place together, when the owners put this place together, uh, I, I guarantee you they didn't have all that in mind when they were putting this together. I mean, they, they, they accidentally kind of saved everybody, kind of brought everybody back together, made everybody feel at home and, and, and kind of gave us a place to where we can build off of and, and branch out and become bigger and better. Where, where there's some people, I know that there's some people that work here that, that uh, were, were kind of in a bad place. Until yeah, we're not even, to mention something else, is just the fact that like, a lot of places aren't quick to hire veterans and stuff where they feel like you might have PTSD coming back or something or they don't know how you're gonna interact with other people. So I feel like this place really helps a lot of people because I know a lot of people out there who are really struggling, having to, trying to get back out there into their regular lives and stuff. And like even me, I still haven't even been deployed yet, but there's a lot of places that I've applied for and they just see a uh, military or whatever. And they think, well, either, even if it's not PTSD, the fact that, well, he's gonna be gone all the time. He has to do training and stuff like that, where this place is so, they're so lenient, lenient you know? Not they like, they're open not, not, not in a way, but like like open. Yeah. Open. Like they're willing yeah. to work with you, and it's good because they, they realize that okay, like we're gonna do this, we're gonna get more output out of our employees Absolutely. in a positive way. Well, the first job I had when I got out of the army, I was bouncing at a club, and uh, my boss actually put me aside about a month into it and said, "Hey, bro, I'm gonna send you on like a week vacation because you're just so high strung." He's like, "You're standing there at parade rest, like watching your post. You're like got that." permanent pissed off look on your face. <laughs> like, oh, isn't that what a bouncer's supposed to be? You know? yeah. yeah, that's what I thought it was supposed to be anyway. So I was like, all right. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, he's like, he's like, you just gotta go and whine. Just go out and just, just relax and, and come back when you're, when you're cool. And I think that if I'd have, if this place had been open in 2010 when I came home, I wouldn't have had to throw myself into that position as quickly. I would have had a lot more of a transition. You wouldn't have felt that rejection. Yeah, it was, it was weird. Cause it was like the dude was a Marine. 
but he even told me, hey, bro, you got to bring it. You're at a 12. I need you at a 5. Bring right. it down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was awkward. I was like, Marines told me to do this. You know? but, right, right. Yeah, we don't usually tell people. <laughs> when, when, when I had a break for active duty, I was working as a, 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 as a loan officer at a bank sitting in a cubicle all day answering the phone. And I was 23 years old at the time, you know, fresh out of being in the freaking Pathfinder company. I jump out of airplanes and hang out with my buddies and doing wazoo shit. And, and I was at, I, not even intentional, but I was an HR complaint all the time. <laughs> I come into Monday, so and so complained about this. Well, why? Because you said fuck. And I'm like, so? Right. And, you know, if that person has wants to needs to talk to me. Well, that conversation will settle like adults. Right. Like you and I, like a few months back, I'm like, hey man, I need to use this lane. I got to run some packages. And you're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I need to use this. And we kind of flex on each other a little bit. And you're like. Oh, okay, yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, all yeah, right, you know. You break that barrier, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Talk like men, you know? All right, guys, so we're going to take another break real quick, and then uh, we'll move on to another couple comments, and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get into some more, some more fun comments and some more fun conversations, so. All right. Thanks. Right, stand. Hey, everybody. Trevor of Battlefield Vegas here. Now, what's the best way to end your Vegas vacation? How about crushing a car with a tank? Now we understand that crushing a car isn't exactly an ordinary activity when you come to Las Vegas. So rest assured knowing that we'll film it for you just so you can show it off to all your friends and family. The only thing that you need to do is choose between a British Chieftain Mark V and a Soviet era T-55. But enough talk. Let's go ahead, get our armor on, and take a glimpse of what you'll be doing on your next trip to Battlefield Vegas. guys welcome back so uh, so real quick before we get any negative comments we got we got some guys that pulled their tops off here so we're, we're kind of out of rigs so don't don't beat us up too bad it's Vegas and it, it ain't raining yet but when it acts like it's gonna rain in the desert and it doesn't all it does is just get stuffy at 120 so uh, so let's uh, so speaking of which the other comment that we're gonna talk about this one's gonna be a little bit more fun um, so we we posted a uh, we posted on Facebook looking for uh, looking for some employees to come in and you know start as drivers or uh, you know come in. We're looking for uh, looking to grow a little bit. Uh, we got a lot of feedback on that one. Uh, some of the stuff that is required uh, working here, as far as uh, grooming standards, stuff like that, uh, looking the part. Uh, we, we got a lot of this feedback, and this one uh, I think this one stood out. Uh, this guy says. Uh, I can't believe you guys want us to look the part without being in regs at least. You make us all look bad with your half-assed uniforms. Since the first time I saw you guys around town after ETSing, I wanted nothing more than to get you guys on Stolen Valor. <laughs> so, uh, all right. yeah, I mean, I think, I think we kind of covered oh. the part. Like I said before, uh, I think the biggest issue is, is making comments without asking questions. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think there's an assumption made here uh, I think the biggest assumption is that, uh, I mean, what is Stolen Valor? Stolen Valor is somebody wearing something they didn't earn. And uh, Jimmy mentioned it before, James mentioned it earlier, that you know you show your duty 214 before you show up here, before you even work here. And every single one of us know what's going on here and who has what. And if somebody showed up here wearing something they didn't earn, I mean, it's, it ain't gonna go over for that person. Uh, I actually might've it? met that dude. Um, a couple months or a couple summers ago, I was driving, uh -huh. sitting down at Caesar's Palace waiting for my pickup. Straight up textbook E7 polo shirt tucked into his khaki shorts, wearing the New Balance <laughs> shoes. High and high and psycho, high and psycho dude just comes, just just range walking across the parking lot, knife hands out. He goes, "What do you think you're doing? Who do you think you are?" Just starts going off on me, and I just look at him, and he's going, and I reach in my wallet and I drop my ID card, drop my VA card, drop my TAM card, and I'm like, got my Ace card. I'm just dropping all the crap I have in my wallet. From the military, and the knife hand gets smaller and smaller <laughs> and smaller, and then I'm like, "Do you want a flyer? Give me a fucking flyer." And then turn around and walks away. So, <laughs> I think it's just like, all right, it's not like you see people walking around with 
fucking first sergeant ranks on or sergeant major ranks or something or generals or something like we're not wearing anything that would say that it's stolen valor like we're just wearing a uniform and everybody here is you is in the military so if you feel a certain way why wouldn't you come and ask questions about instead of just yeah. having you know and obviously this dude lives here right because so he he's seen a, us in town like he, he just question, ets and saw us like, stop by and see what's up man yeah, ask a question man too yeah. easy too easy um, my biggest thing is they want us or we put out the uh army regs i'm not I'm not familiar with them marine corps and everything right right pop a 10 24.34 golf so you know, <laughs> i mean that's our uh, i don't even know what that means yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. you know that's the that's the <laughs> military or marine corps side of it but i mean our biggest thing was look look the part get a fresh haircut get a fresh shave actually look presentable while you're at work you know and for this guy to just jump at us for stolen valor for put ask requiring you to look the part is kind of throwing us off down you, you know i look at it this way is if they want to talk about you know uniforms with guys with sleeves rolled and, and whatnot like um you know if you're if you're if you're if you're a guy that's been in a while and, and, and you want that garrison that garrison fucking look then fine then just like I said, this bothers you so much. Go do something else with your day. But like, this is kind of like this is this is a, this is like a pseudo field job. We have guys in the motor pool turning wrenches on vehicles all day. Yeah. We have guys out in Humvees driving around all day in 110 degree weather. The range is hot and we're packed with people. So yeah, guys are gonna roll their sleeves. Guys are gonna blouse their boots. Um, you know, and, and, and whatnot. And also, like, you know, we have a presentable clean haircuts. But like, yeah. You, I'm not gonna have a high-end ranger, you know. Like, <laughs> no, I'm a bachelor. I'm, a ba I'm, a, I'm not gonna have a high-end psycho. I'm a bachelor, you know. I, you know, it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's one of the things we talked about uh, before. Is is uh, another thing that one of us brought up earlier was, you know, the, the tapes that we're wearing when we wear a tape. It doesn't say USMC. It doesn't say Air Force. It doesn't say U.S. Army. It says Battlefield. We're we're representing Battlefield. We're not representing anybody else. And uh, you know that what gets what I think that gets people is because we're we're a commercial entity, because you don't see these guys going after LEOs that are wearing fatigues with with ball caps with whatever. You don't see them going after uh, the militia types that are walking around in fatigues. It's 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 us, and I, I think that uh, you know it's important that we talk about this today to to kind of break that mold of of uh, you know letting everybody know who we are. Like we're not trying to represent anything but this business that's that's important to all of us. That that we feel uh, you know at home. at home. You know, I mean, we we feel like you know this is this place means a lot to us, and um, you know, and, and I actually appreciate everything that that this place has has given me. And, and listening to you guys today, I think you guys all feel the exact same way that I do. Absolutely. Um, you guys have anything else you guys want to talk about as far as uh, the stolen valor and uniforms? Just come, come talk to us in person. Yeah. I mean, not not so much in the negative aspect of it. You don't <laughs> no knife hands, man. You don't got a knife hand. That's when you no. come and talk come to talk us. Come talk to us. Come understand where we're coming from before these comments come out. Assess the situation before you execute. Put exactly. It in the Absolutely, man. You have a private Absolutely. messenger bu button on Facebook. If you're a local uh, or you're a tourist in town that's a veteran, you know, we're right off the strip. We're on industrial, right behind Circus Circus. Okay, too easy. Like, you know, we're bopping up and down the street in Humvees. You can ask a driver, like, oh yeah, this is what we do. Okay, cool. Yeah, Instead of standing there, going on Facebook or pulling out your cell phone, you know. Click, click. You know, yeah, while you're trolling us on Facebook, go to our, our contact information and give us a call. Yeah. You know. Ask, man. Talk to us. We're, we're approachable people for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, hey man, I, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys to death. Uh, thanks for being here with us today, guys. Thanks, man. Absolutely. 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 Thank you guys. And uh, tune in next time. Next time we have an after hours. It'll be a little bit more looser next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.